Imagine you spend your whole life chasing your dreams, pursuing what you love, and becoming the world's next big thing, just to be exploited and left with little to nothing. Since the beginning of the music industry, major record labels have taken advantage of ambitious young artists, suckering them into contracts disguised as a gateway to fame, but ultimately leaving them short-changed. Rappers have been no exception. The hip-hop industry is often known for taking advantage of numerous young MCs who lack knowledge about money and law, and left them stuck with some really bad contracts. Tracks. My name is Luesta, and these are the worst record deals we've ever seen through hip-hop history. The horror stories of artists like Lil Boom, who took a ridiculous $7,500 advance and partially forfeited his rights, might lead you to believe that these atrocities could never happen to the biggest names in the game. However, cases like NBA Youngboy prove that it doesn't matter how many times you're the number one streamed artist on YouTube, and that it makes no difference if you were roped into signing a bad contract to begin with. I'm sure you all know who NBA Youngboy is. The Baton Rouge rapper took the world by storm with his gritty and painfully honest tales of his life in the streets and has refused to let go ever since. He has more than 30 billion total streams and over 100 RIAA certified releases, including three platinum or double platinum albums. But despite his success, he's only received a fraction of the reward, cementing his story as a cautionary tale for artists on the come up. And yet, it's still not even close to the worst one in this video. Once Youngboy rose to the highest peaks of the industry, OGs and media figures started looking at his deal and realizing that he wasn't getting what he was owed, which told them everything they needed to know about how the rap game is run. Why did Atlantic basically tell Youngboy, listen, after 22 albums that you dropped in a, in, in a time period where we only contracted you to do five, we'll negotiate and give you this amount of money, but we ain't giving you a mother party of masters back. These are real things. What does that mean? When Youngboy started, he's 17, he's 22 now. You don't understand what the f going on. He's just putting out music. Even you look at the guys now that that's probably big right now with social media. I just seen they had M NBA Young Boy. He's the biggest YouTuber influencer for his music. He did a deal for two million dollars for five records. So think about that. You got the money up front. But imagine what they get. We have to teach that to the next generation. Look at the bigger picture. Don't just look at the now. At a certain point, Youngboy woke up, realized how unfair his deal was, and started fighting for his release. Beginning with this simple post on his IG story from July of 2020 that read, I said they can have the next four albums for free. All I want is my masters, and I still got told no. Dirty game. Among the top artists on streaming services today, Atlantic Records knew what they had and started getting creative in terms of how they classified his projects just to extend his time there. Atlantic's making a killing off you. But of course, the greatest thing they do is they they only called three of them an album. Now in recording contracts, this is how it works. Youngboy's drop way more than five projects. Now why is he dropping those projects? Because that's his way of staying hot. He feeds the streets. He could have got busy. If they're not going to count one of these to my album requirement, I'm not dropping. They're going to say, well, nigga, we, we told you only drop once a year. Trapped in a deal that no amount of drops or hits could save him from, Youngboy was left only reaping a portion of the prize he deserved. As one of Youngboy's fans put it, people sign shitty deals when they're desperate. Then they blow up and realize just how bad their deal is. Following this, Youngboy continued releasing, but did so while waging a war against Atlantic, with the intention of warning other rappers to avoid doing business with them. Don't sign to Atlantic. If you're an artist, they're not going to support you, especially if you live a certain way. After all that back and forth, it came as no surprise when Youngboy refused the $25 million deal that Atlantic offered him after his previous agreement expired. Beginning with 2023's I Rest My Case, Youngboy has been signed to an alleged multi-million dollar deal with Motown, a place where he seems much happier. Youngboy handled his situation with patience, but there are instances where high profile stars face so much label bullshit that they get burnt out, leaving the mic behind forever. This is the case with former Young Money signee, Tyga. And after what happened to him, it's really no surprise that he stayed independent ever since. In his early career, Tyga was on his mixtape grind. After briefly signing to an indie label run by Gym Class Heroes' Travi McCoy, the Cali rapper caught the attention of Lil Wayne and Young Money, the subsidiary that Tunchi ran as part of his deal with Birdman's Cash Money and Republic. After getting the chance to show the public what he could do on tracks like Bedrock and Rack City, Tyga's debut album, Careless World, Rise of the Last King, was a major smash. But even though he should have been flying high, what the young artist didn't know at the time was that he was being screwed over big time on his label. After after he decided to leave the label before the release of his fourth album, he was about to realize how much he messed up back then. Because as he prepared to leave Young Money, it would majorly cost him. I'm on a roll with Wayne. He's recording Carter 3, so I'm just in the yeah, sauce right now. Yeah. We did uh, Bedrock and was like, you know, you gotta sign. 
this is gonna be the single. I was like, all right, cool. So I signed, I didn't even think about it. I didn't think twice. I had a lawyer, but like my lawyer at the time was the same lawyer that was representing cash money. It was already a bad so thing from jump. I'm 17, 18, so I don't really know nothing about lawyers. And then I'm just like, cool, I'm rocking with Wham. I'm on the bus with him every day. I'm having fun, so. I wasn't really worried about it. From 2015 onwards, Tyga has dropped music through his independent label, Last Kings and Empire. For a while, he was flopping hard. Even the assistance of Kanye West as an executive producer on a couple of projects couldn't save him. But with his 2019 project Legendary and its smash single, Taste, Tyga finally mounted a legit comeback, overcoming the odds stacked against him. His momentum stalled again soon after, and following a short spell as an OF creator, he returned in 2023 on a collaboration project with YG. While the track didn't exactly set the world alight, at least he's getting 100% of what he's owed now that he's freed himself from the legal dispute over his first deal. But for someone who was more of a one-hit wonder than expected, failing to live up to your promise can really leave you in a bad spot. When it comes to artists who know that kind of pain, few of them have been as vocal about their misfortunes as Krayshawn. If you're not familiar, Krayshawn was once projected to be a huge star. A young white female who brought a unique flavor to the game, Cray caught fire with early hits like Gucci Gucci and Bumpin' Bumpin' back in 2011. Today, a lot of fans feel that, for better or worse, these tracks were ahead of their time and hinted at the direction music was heading in. Imagine if this dropped today. TikTok servers would overload and explode. Courtesy of her huge momentum, the polarizing rapper found herself with a deal from Atlantic, a repeat offender in today's video, and as you'll see, they will only get more and more ruthless. After she was given a $1 million advance, it would take until September of the following year for her debut album, Something About Cray, to drop. It peaked at number 112 upon release, and the only tracks that made any impact had already been released. It was simply a flop, perhaps one that people should have seen coming. After this short-lived adventure, people swept her aside, and she went largely undiscussed. Today, she has yet to release another project with the label. Since then, Krayshawn has rallied against the contract they put her in, and claimed to have seen almost no money for her most successful tracks. F playing Gucci Gucci, <laughs> f playing Go Hard, that shit don't go to my pocket. You don't you get know? any money from that? No. Not any like, oh, you get a check for a hundred bucks? I literally get a check for a hundred bucks. Literally. Yeah, from ASCAP, like every three months. To make matters worse, Cray wasn't only losing out on money, but in turn, owes thousands to her label even as Gucci Gucci reached platinum status in 2023. Crazy that I will owe Sony 800k on one album for 10 plus years. It's sounding fishy. I know they're eating off me till this day, but platinum? Still in the same money debt? 10 years? Math, not mathing. Here's more numbers. I swear my debt started at 800k when I saw it 10 years ago, and it has barely changed. Sometimes I even swear it gets higher. In Krayshawn's case, we see what can happen when an advance is never recouped. She's now stuck trying to free herself from a debt she could never repay. However, not all issues with labels stem from money. For some, creative differences can create even worse predicaments. And for Lupe Fiasco, this was exactly what he dealt with under Atlantic. Way back in the day, Lupe was just a spitter from Chicago who seemed like he was next up. Renowned for his incredible technical abilities, Lupe made good on that promise with his debut album Food and & Liquor and its follow-up The Cool, which gave him the biggest hit ever on the Matthew Santos assisted superstar. Yeah, uh, a fresh cool young Lou, trying to cash his microphone check now that he had given the label a taste of the commercial success he could bring them, they wanted all they could squeeze out of him. In turn, this led to their relationship falling apart and one of the most talented spitters of a generation getting majorly mistreated by his label. I once asked Lior for my masters in exchange for signing a 360 deal, and he said, do I want them in a suitcase to carry around? A greatest hit from among all the other wild stuff some of these white record execs have said to me with a straight face in private. Around the time he was crafting his third album, Lasers, the label started putting major pressure on him to get things moving along. The whole relationship was disintegrating because he refused to play ball with their demands. I was also told because you didn't sign this 360 deal, you may or we may or may not push your record. So when Shining Down came out and you didn't hear it on the radio station, it's because they didn't they never took it to a radio station. As things continued to get tense, fans even organized protests outside of their offices to force Atlantic to drop the project. Yet, Atlantic continued to screw him over, even taking the original version of Airplanes and giving it to B.O.B. instead, robbing him of a hit song. I jump to defend, I'm wage with a page, my pen's mightier than them and I got missiles on the stage. 
Lupe would see continued success with the label, including a number one album and multiple projects, but was ultimately forced to sabotage his career to regain his freedom. I like lasers. I knew that it was going to be some bullshit. So I was like, you know what? I will never, ever, ever, as long as I'm on this label, give this label like my heart, like what I really, if you work with somebody, they have to like show you some love, right? So I took an L. Since 2017's Drogas Light, Lou has been dropping what he wants, and fans can rest assured knowing they'll get the rest of his projects in all their intellectual glory. But he's not the only artist who had to scratch and claw to regain their artistic freedom. In the case of Megan Thee Stallion, she was cheated out of millions before she could call her music her own. Signed to the label 1501, owned by former MLB player Carl Crawford, Megan's early career was regularly stunted by 1501's micromanagement. Before long, her annoyance churned into internet outcry. I want to tell y'all that 1501 trying to tell me I can't put out no music. Y'all don't see no music from Megan Thee Stallion? It's because 1501 don't want to drop that music. I know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management. I got real lawyers and... They was like, do you know that this is in your contract? And I was like, oh, damn. As Meg attracted more fame, she earned a management deal at Rock Nation. It was during the legal battle to get her out of her contract that its corrupt elements began to reveal themselves. The lawsuit spells out what Megan considers to be the worst parts of the deal she has with 1501. She says that she got a $10,000 advance when she signed and that the label gets 60% of her recording income. Of the 40%, she still has to pay engineers, mixers, and other artists who featured on her tracks. Megan says they're supposed to give her a statement on what she's owed, but that their accounting has been purposefully and deceptively vague. The suit went on to reveal that Megan has over 1 billion streams and 300 individual track downloads. That translates to around $7 million, while her ex-label has only paid her $15,000. After a lot of back and forth, they finally settled things in 2023, and by October of that year, she announced the launch of her very own Hot Girl Productions, backed by a distribution deal through Warner. Megan's online tirade, backed by her massive success, landed her a pretty admirable outcome. But other artists have had to take much more extreme measures to get their way. The story of TLC is a perfect example, as they had to resort to gang-like methods in order to shake a terrible deal off their backs. One of the most popular girl groups of the 90s, TLC's Chili, t boz and Lisa Left Eye Lopez all signed deals when they were barely in their 20s. What they didn't realize is that their contract with La Face Records gave them a measly 56 cents per album sold, which also had to be split three ways. This comes out at around $200,000 for every million albums sold. On top of that, TLC received delayed royalty payments and eventually had to file for bankruptcy despite having grossed millions. After staying silent on the matter, TLC finally hit a breaking point. After they swept the Grammys, they explained that they were in a bad spot and how they ended up in it. I'll put it to you this way. We are the biggest selling female group ever. 10 million albums worldwide. We have worked very hard. We have been in this business for five years, and we are broke as broke can be. I, I can't go into everything right now, but trust me, you can sell 10 billion albums and be broke if you have greedy people behind you. Well, you know, contracts and stuff is kind of hard to handle business when you're stuck in um, contracts that say certain things. It didn't take a heated phone call or hiring fiery lawyers. The ladies of TLC took Clive Davis, the head of the label's parent company, and held him hostage to negotiate a better deal. We held the record company hostage with guns, guns with bullets, because TLC had generated $75 million on Crazy Sexy Cool, and they gave us $50,000 a piece. And I was like, what the hell? So of course, Lisa was the ringleader, we had a limo driver, and he was the getaway car. The story immediately made headlines, but even with the insane actions that TLC had to take, young artists continue to fall victim to contracts like these. For example, Anneli Chapa became one of hip-hop's biggest hypocrites after the label got to his head. And if you want to hear about that story, you can click the video on the screen.